two villagers and a six star attack within the Builder Base 2.0 update. This information alongside alpha gameplay footage was literally just released. I am going to break down and explain it all because there's some extra hints within the footage as well. The staying small, going deeper blog post starts out, it's me, Stuart. That is the game lead for Clash of Clans, by the way. And he says the current Builder Base is less fun the higher you go. Earlier on, there is focused tactical fun, a bit like a puzzle. So the two villagers, or multi-stage to be exact, is how they're trying to emulate that. I'm going to explain it all in this video. The next couple of paragraphs explain what we already know. I gave you that information in a video, which I'll link you to at the end of this one. But then he talks about how Builder Hall 1 through 5 will stay the same. However, Builder Hall 6 and beyond is where you get a second buildable area. So it is essentially one village because you can drag buildings across the two of them, but they are actually separate in the sense that when you are attacking somebody else or when somebody else is attacking you, your Builder Hall 6 and above unlocks a second stage. So people have to three star the first stage before they can move to the second. And there's a lot of clarification on how that will work alongside the extra hints in the footage. So let's continue. Once you unlock the second stage, you will automatically unlock Otto because you will have Otto's outpost as the town hall in that second stage. Don't worry though, the sixth builder for the home village will stay at Builder Hall 9. Essentially, now you always have two builders within the builder base once you get to Builder Hall 6. Unlocking the sixth builder for the home village will remain at Builder Hall 9, but it will now be a permanent sixth builder for the home village. You don't have to move them back and forth. Your two builders in the builder base though, Master Builder and Otto, can work wherever across the two stages because it is one big village. They do clarify that non-defenses like the clock tower and gold storages, they do have set areas. So for example, up to Builder Hall 5, you will unlock a certain amount of storages. These will remain on the first stage as you progress to Builder Hall 6 and above, and then you unlock more storages. They will remain on the second stage. So you have a set amount of buildings that have to be on each stage. It's not like you can take every building across to one stage and have nothing on the other one. There is somewhat of a limit, but the defenses are the main things that you're going to be able to pull across. You might want to have an anti-air village on one side and an anti-ground village on the next side. Probably not advised, to be honest, based on how the attacking will work, which we will go over now. Obviously, we've already had some of the alpha footage playing, but now that we're talking about attacks, we can make it specific. I do want to mention, though, in the first part of the footage, the eagle-eyed of you might have seen a dragon rider in the second village. Darian did tease another hero in my video, but remember they use placeholder art in alpha footage, so we have no idea. More than likely, this is just placeholder art. I, for one, would think it's very unexciting to have a regular troop as a hero. I'd imagine they would bring out something totally new. But moving to the attacking stage, this is how it will work. When you match against an opponent's base, you only see the first stage. So you have to plan your attack and pick your army to beat this, but it is very very important which ones you pick because it will also determine what you can use for the second stage. So you do have to three star the first stage before you can then move on and try and get the fourth, fifth and sixth star. Now this is where it is very important. They clarify which troops you will be able to use for that second stage. So any surviving troops from the first stage will move back to your deployment bar and receive some healing. We actually see that within the alpha foot as well. It also says you will receive one or two extra camps of troops as reinforcements depending on your Builder Hall level. However, the next part is very important and I even messaged the Clash team for clarification on this point for you. The response, I'll read it word for word for you, if an army camp is 100% undeployed, it can be swapped before the second stage. Otherwise, it will contain the surviving units from that camp and cannot be 
swapped. So for example, if you have four raged barbarians in an army camp slot, even if you just deploy one of them, that is still some of that army camp slot you used on the first village. So then on the second, you can't swap that. So it's going to be really interesting that you might look at the first base and say, okay, there are no crushers on this base. So I know there is going to be two of them in the second stage. Or you might do that with other defenses. Anyway, that is going to determine which troops you pick for the first one. But also, do you try and save on to some of them so that you can swap out and assure that you have then air troops for the second stage? In the second stage, to get the three stars, one is for destroying Otto's outpost. One is for crossing 150% destruction or 50% of the second base. And then reaching the 200% destroying both villages gives you the six stars. Now, in terms of the alpha gameplay that is shown for this, the battle machine, clearly level 35. And you can see that all of the troops appear to be level 20. Now, again, alpha footage details might change, but that would seem pretty accurate thinking about it since we know that Builder Hall 10 is coming. Speaking of which, that appears to be Builder Hall 10 right there in the center of that first village. Again, the red glowing expo, my guess here is that that is placeholder art. I would assume we're getting a new defense at Builder Hall 10. Also within this footage though, you might have noticed the battle machine appears different. He's 3D, so presumably we're getting battle machine skins. They've already said that they're looking to add sceneries for the Builder Base. I think it could be really cool that it progresses with the stages and your scenery will encompass both of the villages. That would be just awesome. But in terms of that auto hut, take a look at once it is destroyed. We can see what appears to be zappies underneath it. There is five of them in this footage and it's Builder Hall 10. So perhaps you get one for every Builder Hall once you get to Builder Hall 6. I don't know, maybe it's just a Builder Hall 10 thing. The other point that I found interesting within this footage is that the cannon carts in the second attack completely outrange the crusher. They take out the Tesla. So that appears to be a pretty good strategy. And I'm not too sure on the footage as to how the mortar then works because we did see question marks above it. It's kind of hard to see from a replay. We can't see the icons and actively pressing the trigger abilities. So it's unclear whether a timer caused the mortar to go back to the cannon cart or whether it was actively triggered by the attacker. I guess that's something we'll find out at a later date. Stuart continues in the blog post to say it's very exciting to sail past 100% after 10 years of clash. I would agree on that one, Stuart. And he says the more heroic troops, the balanced, rewarding, attacking and defending, and the staying small, going deeper blog posts have essentially gone into the foundations of the Builder Base. There's a lot more information to come on Builder Hall 10. I guess they just wanted to share the information of redesigning the Builder Base. And if you do want to see everything in a bit more depth that was shared before this current post, I have that all succinct for you nicely in this video. I'm excited for this update. I hope you are too. Enjoy the rest of your day.